Yisun Taishi was a chief, or Khagan of the Western Orat Mongols. Yisun, while not a direct descendant of Chinggis, was able to become Khagan by marrying his daughter to the Khan Tokdobuka. And with the destruction of the Eastern Mongols at the hands of the Ming Dynasty, Yisun saw the opportunity to reunify and reinvigorate the steppe people in a post-Yuan era and get a more significant position in their relations with the Ming Dynasty. However, the Chinese rebuffed Mongol advances towards equality by limiting their volume of trade. An ambitious Yisun retaliated in 1449 by damaging the tea horse trade after Wang Chen attempted to underpay Yisun for his horses. The angry and vengeful Oirat proceeded to raid China, eventually capturing Kan Chao and Ningxia in the northwestern border. Yisun was able to disrupt the tea horse trade by destroying the gold tablet system, which was the fundamental component to any tea horse transaction, and preventing the transport of Chinese tea because soldiers who previously carried tea were diverted to address Yisun's many raids. As a response to Yisun's raids, the Ming Zengtong Emperor launched an expedition to stop his forces. Under the advice of Wang Chen, the Emperor camped at Tu Mu in September 1st, 1449 and attempted to move against Mongol forces, only to be ambushed and decimated. The Chinese army was cut to pieces and the Emperor was captured. The disastrous Tu Mu incident ruined Ming military prestige and forced them to permanently revert into defensive political tactics for the remainder of the dynasty. Now, Yisun was more than just a pest to the Ming Dynasty. His persistence and aggression shifted the power dynamics between the Chinese and the Mongols for years to come. The Ming were forced to remove the limitations and controls inflicting Mongol karmas, thereby granting them more independence and power in these proceedings. The Tumu incident forced the Ming to reconsider their policies with the steppe people, and to think twice before underestimating them again in the future. These concessions to Yisun and the Mongols signify the Chinese acknowledgement of Mongol political growth, strength, power, and relevance in a post-Yuan world. And if only for a short time, Yisun's military prowess elevated him to the status of Khan, when he was unfortunately killed in an Oirat rebellion in 1455. Despite a short-lived reign, it seemed as though for a moment, Yisun was closely reunifying the Mongols and finally restoring the greatness of the preceding Yuan dynasty. Yisun's actions reminded the Chinese that the Mongols were still a significant and relevant power to be reckoned with, even after the fall of the Yuan dynasty. He set the precedent for the continuing assertion of Mongol unification against the Chinese state. His persistence in affirming Mongol relevance developed a dynamic between the Chinese and the Mongols that even extended to the 17th century with Galdin, who led the Zungars, a descendant faction from the Oirats, in a significant competition against the dominant Qing dynasty to control the steppe. Yisun's story is one of the underdog, reflecting the Mongol struggle to return to the glory of the Yuan dynasty. He was but one of many inter-Asian leaders expressing a dissatisfaction with the status quo, a sentiment that outlined the relationship between China and the intersteppe for centuries.